Yo, what up? This your boy Easy Rebel, and you listening to the hottest hip hop show in the 757, The Hangover Show, on Cheese Town Radio. Salute. Dirty work. Oh, yeah. He may tell you, but I can't say it, man. I'm sorry, man. I apologize to everybody. That's <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't tell you. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, man. I mean, I'm from um, I'm from the beach area, uh, Broader Creek, they saw the wrong side of things. Yep, yep, yep. And um, when I was really young, you know what I'm saying, I, I, I was able to uh, to uh, identify with the old with the older head. So like when I was young, the first name that they gave me was like they were like, yo, you remind me of Earl Ski or Mike Ski, like the like the early nicknames when you was out on the block. So yeah, yeah. I picked up the name Bake Ski, and from that it changed to Skeezer because. Um, <laughs> because oh, of what? Yeah. No, yeah, no, we're no. not going to I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean to be to be honest, I would like for it to be because you know what I'm saying I'm debonair and I'm good with the woman, but it's actually not like that. No. I, I got I got the name Bait Skeezer is, is because I'm very articulate behind the mic, yeah. and he was like, yo. It ain't it ain't it ain't a word that you ain't fuck, boy. You know what I'm saying? So so you you a skis on the mic. You know you use all words. So I like that even better. That's dope. That's dope. That's what's up. You guys are part of a group called the Dirty Workers. How did you uh, guys get together? Now, um, me and um, me and shout out to Jay Skizzle. Wait, hold up. I gotta try that. I can't even do it. Wait, teach me, teach me. Now, now, now. There you go. You go. Okay. Nah. So look, um, um, me and Skizzle, me and Skizzle came together. We're like, we're we're lifelong best friends. You know what I'm saying? We went to sixth grade together, seventh grade. Like we we grew up together. And um, in the early 2000s, I mean, like maybe like 2004, 2005, we came together as a, a as a, a a crew, and we started the Dirty Workers. You know what I'm saying? But during that time, I was real um, conflicted with whether I wanted to be an artist or whether I wanted to be um, Tony Montana. So I got caught up in the streets, mm -hmm. and Skizzle kept pushing. When I came home, I made it my 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 duty to push along with him. And we just instead of staying beach bound, we just started picking up artists that could identify with us because it's more than more than making good music. You know what I'm saying? You want to be able to 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 live and die with your brother. So instead of it being a label or something, it's more of a fraternity or a brotherhood. So that's how we ended up with the artists that we do because you know we all look out for one another. So I'm, so, I'm assuming you and Jay Skizzle are the oldest. How did Stu Money come into play? <clears throat> I met Stu Money at the Union Mission. I was doing um, some, uh, he was on a cot. <laughs> 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 no, no, straight up. I mean, to Look, you know my social work. Uh, and then it started going up. Maybe you still there? No, no, no. <laughs> to, 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 to be honest, yo. You know what I'm saying? I was hosting at the Paradigm, and I, I saw him and uh, his movement, and uh, we ended up uh, seeing each other in the mall. 
linking up, you know what I mean? And um, we've been together ever since. Now, he hung around with me for like maybe two to three years before we did the Dirty Worker move and I brought him on board. But like I said before, it, it was a fraternity. I had to make sure, and he had to make sure that he was comfortable around me because aside from this music shit, it's life yeah. that we have to live. And we just definitely live a life. Yeah. So. so, Stu, tell me your comfortability around those guys, being that they're older than you. I mean, I was always around the OGs, you know what I'm saying? That's why I carry myself the way I do, even though I'm a fucking knucklehead. You know what I mean? I, I was always around the old heads. I mean, this shit, this shit about nothing, you know what I'm saying? Right. Skis, you know what I mean? They taught me a lot, but a lot I already knew, you know what I'm saying? That's why they grabbed me up. They ain't had nobody else young as me, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, and the lane of music that I'm in, they could have kept it all hip-hop, you know what I'm saying? They grabbed me up for a reason. I mean, I'm ahead of my time, so. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm very comfortable, same the same grandson. I mean, what I want to know is, describe a studio session with all of y'all in there at one time. Oh, or is it ever a, a time when all of y'all in there at the same time? Well, we, <clears throat> it's kind of hard for us to work like that because th this is how I try to com compare things. You know, Olympic teams and all star teams, you know, Olympic teams get together once every four years, all-star teams get together once a season, and to be with this crew where everybody is working so much, it's hard to synchronize times where we can all get there. So a lot of times somebody will go in there and lay something, and then they'll come to the fortress or wherever else that we gather and be like, yo, I left this for you, take care of that. Right. Because we have so many different campaigns, and that's how we stay flooding flooding the streets because mm -hmm. at, there was a time where we was kind of dormant. That's when I got into the hosting thing just to keep our name but right now it's our season, so it's hard to get everybody because there's six of us that really rhyme. It's hard to get everybody in the studio at the same time, so we have to knock out different things at different studios because everybody's comfortable at different places. Right. Let's talk about the red tape. Um, I saw you put bait that you're a, more of a bars guy. Stu is more of a trap rapper. How do y'all put that together? And was it was it difficult to? Kind of be on both. That shit was about nothing. We did, yeah. you know, we did that shit in like one session and a half. Wow. Yeah. At the <clears throat> at the end of the day, like I'm 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 from the era where you have to have bars. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Exactly. But I also understand the landscape of music right now. Where uh, they're not really checking for that mm -hmm. as much as they used to. Now I see it. I, I see a change coming, and that's great. But at the end of the day, man. Good music is good music, man. You got a good hook. You have something that people can sing along with. And that's what, yeah, that's what we did. What we basically did was I challenged him with with, 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 with some 90s beats and some early 2000s beats. See, see, what fucked them up is they thought I couldn't. Okay. You right. feel me? Okay. Right. Before I was doing the little dumb down rap, I was really spit. Okay. I just only started putting bacon soda on it because that's what everybody wanted. You know what I'm saying? Okay. When, when, when rap switched up. It was going from the up north, you really had to have lyrics to you could say whatever the fuck you wanted on a nice beat. You know what I mean? But in real life, I'd set some shit up. And that, and that was the whole thing, that was the whole trick of, of getting Stu with us because maybe five years ago, I would have been like, man, we don't need a trap artist, man. All we need is hip hop. But at the end of the day, man, the man can spit and he's speaking for the youth right now and the struggle. And I would be beside myself if I looked over him and then three, four years later, man, he's on MTV and on everybody else's station talking about, hey, big skeezer, you little dumbass. <laughs> so basically, so basically, Stu Money balances the crew out. Right, so right. Like he makes, he, he, he covers all, he makes sure that we cover all. Okay. okay, so out of everybody in the crew, what made you guys decide to do a project together? together? Well, because like it's out of everybody in the crew, between it, the, the relationship with me and him is like, like the music can stop the mob. I mean, well, like, yeah, the same thing with them, but it's just, I really can't explain, you know what I'm saying? It's me, it's you just kind work of well, man. This is my, this is my, we, we're, we're yeah. together daily, yeah. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's you my know? whole fucking blood, bro. So it makes you know sense because blood, the, the chemistry is there. Yes, right. 24 yeah. 7, like, right. we even starved together, you know? You know how that go, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, you know man. Real, 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 real nigga shit, like, it's my dog right here, so. They made that mixtape one night, you know what I mean? I did a little jail time and I had some. I had a few a few weeks to write, so I came home like, bro, I got some '90s beats. He said, I'ma get on. And next thing you know, two sessions, the red tape was bracking. Nice. I mean, he said he was gonna put it out there. He put it out there. All I had to do was rap. 
I wasn't even thinking about the red, no red tape. I was thinking about King Ratchet too. Right. I mean, this shit happened like overnight, man. You know what I mean? Shout out my nigga Big Ski, the big man. Wow. Okay. Um, safe to say is one of my favorites. Oh, man. Um, safe to say. <laughs> let, actually, hold on, let me tell you a story, man. Yeah, so to talk to me about I did that. not make up the word, the uh, phrase safe to say. When I was in jail, it was an old cat that will always say that. You know what I'm saying? Like, safe to say shit, like she got some good ass pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and every and and I was and I was the one in jail that will always 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 say it. You know what I mean? So when I came home, I always said it. So everybody picked up on it, and I hurried up and made a song out of it for people that didn't have nothing to do with nothing. Try to make a song out of it. It was safe to say. You know what I mean? Shout out to my nigga, man. Safe to say, I got you here, man. So <laughs> yeah, I chill for you. Man. Is it safe to say that's how you do your writing process? You take no, 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 not at all. Not at all. That's the only time I ever like used somebody else's shit. Period. Like in that type of they phrase of mm -hmm. not nah, like all my shit. Most of my shit be freestyling off the top. You know what I mean? Right. But like safe to say, I had to make a song out of that because someone directly inboxed me and said, "Yo, I got an idea." And safe to say, I said, "Hold up." You're not gonna be the one to do that. You didn't do jail time with the man that said that. I gave him hot place and if right. I got the right to make a song right. called Safe to Say. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Safe to say. Right. <laughs> um I probably I'm probably gonna mess this up, so but I'm gonna try it. Mow. Mow. No, mow. <laughs> this is a thing. This Tell is the thing. We gonna, we, gonna, we, gonna, we gonna get into that real Tell quick. Tell me about that. Alright, the whole the whole the whole <laughs> Thing. Shout out to Man J Raw because he's gonna argue me down that he is the creator of this. So I'm just okay. gonna give him that because I don't feel like arguing today. Okay. <laughs> so the whole the whole mer expression uh -huh. is a it's an exclamation. Uh -huh. Like um like uh somebody could come in the fort and the, the fort is where it's like the dirty worker headquarters. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? So somebody could come in the fort with a nice looking young lady and a half a gallon of Hennessy and we look at him and be like, Mur. you know what I'm saying? Like it's about to go down. Or it could be something where um where uh uh somebody goes in the booth and lays down a hot sixteen and they come out the booth and it's like Mur. And so 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 from the Mur which really which really came from drinking Merlot because back in the day we used to drink a lot of Merlot. Um it just it just morphed into the mouths and the ma and anything with M and you, you just say it real short, you know what I mean? Okay. So it kind of took off like that. So that's really a dirty work of staple. So is it both of them? Is it involved? Has it evolved into just mouth or is it still? It's, it's, like, or like, or it's like, like this. It's like, like this. And and this is really dope. Like when you have like a female that's onto the dirty work of music, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? And you be like, and you say murder her, and she says mouth back, okay. you're in there. <laughs> That's how I go. You, they, they feeling you, you know, the fellas do it too, but we feel really, really great when, when a female murs or when a female mouths because that means they're checking out the music, they're on to the movement. They still. And it's all positive. Yeah. You think that'll work for me, bro? I know it will. <laughs> <laughs> it never fails, man. <laughs> and every 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 new worker that comes, like that be the first, be the first they, thing they, they try. They, they, don't, they don't even know what it means, but if you say it, they gonna say it back. Yeah, because it's some other people using those term those terms. So yeah, I yeah. just I'm gonna have to go back. I'm gonna have to we look back on my it, shit. Yeah, look, I'm gonna have to go back and be like, never mind. <laughs> Let's so, get back into the project a little bit. Um, uh, we named a few songs, Safe to Say, Work, uh, Codeine and Sprite. Elaborate a little bit on how these songs came about. And like I said, the Safe to Say joint, it came from a guy I was being with, you know what I'm saying? Um, Codeine and my Sprite, um, that was Big's idea, you know what I'm saying? I had, um, I, I was listening to um, Lil Wayne and, um, um, Two chains project or whatever, and the song "Motherfucking Right" came on. Man, and I was, I was, yeah, I was listening to it. I was listening to it, and that, and I had called him. I think I woke him out out of, out of his rest, and I was out, like, out of a codeine rest. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, bro, we really, we really can do something. We really can do a project, and that was one of the new school trap beats that I brought to the table. Like, yo, I can catch wreck on this shit. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it was just, it was really weird because I didn't actually bring. 
most of the 90s beats. He did. I think I brought the the brain joint. You no, know? no, he brought Brother Spiders. That's oh yeah, yeah. I didn't bring all any other any other any other joints. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He came to this project with a chip on his shoulder and something to prove because um, that was grumblings when we first got him that. Damn, y'all don't got a spitter, y'all got a trap artist or whatever, like he couldn't spit. Mm -hmm. So with this project, we made sure that he was comfortable with whatever we did. And he mm -hmm. really, like, there's some tracks where I'm trying to keep up with him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, and he did a really good job, man, yeah. I think. Appreciate I, it, man. I really enjoyed it. That shit was on, um, that shit was on from my life, man. Especially that last song, man, that was a whole freestyle. Mm -hmm. And the cabinet joint, man, that's a lot of people's favorite, too. That's a whole holding time freestyle, man. Like, so really, we so really putting the about it. I just want to I just want to bring it back to the essence. That's a, that's the whole thing with 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 the red tape. I wanted it to be like the way that Master P grinded out of his trunk and how the, how the, how the Houston how the Houston mob was doing and and I just feel like that nowadays everything is digital and sonically and free. You know what I mean? And I just feel like you get what you pay for. You know, um, we're not trying to be stingy or anything like that, but we want to. I know if I pay five to seven dollars for anything, I'm gonna check it out. You know what right. I'm saying? And we're for, we're forcing ears, and we really love the fans because we saved a lot of money on promotion by the fans just getting it and just reposting and, and yeah. quoting yeah, and so crazy right so now. I mean right now if you're not really messing with the tape you know what I'm saying it's safe to say you're probably hating you know what I mean because we we we, we pretty we, we did a pretty good job on it so just pull up hit us up you know we're, we're very uh, reachable we out here you know what I'm saying scared. and get you a tape for five dollars man you know what I mean and appreciate music again man you know, everything is just being digitally drawn out, you know what I'm saying? So we just want to bring it back to the SS, man, get you a tape, man. That's why we call it. Also, um, <laughs> me either, bro. <laughs> also, I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning up my life. I got a manager. Um, shout out to my manager, Jamal. Hey, what, what's your uh, Facebook? Uh, Jamal Ferguson. Jamal Ferguson. Um, hit him up if you need red tape. I also host, you know what I mean? He does my bookings for all that, too, so. Uh, Jamal. Me and uh, Dirty Cole is seeking management now. <laughs> <laughs> he got his hands full with the skis. <laughs>